Good evening. Hope all of you are doing great. Um, over the last couple of days, we've been learning general rules about Lubavin and Hadassin. Tonight, we're going to move over to the Aravos. The elusive Arava of our day is brittle within a day or two. It doesn't take much. So I and my Rabbeim, and what I've learned from them is we kind of wrap them up in something that's a little moist. You have to be careful for schita. So aluminum foil with a piece of paper towel on the inside, sprinkle some water, wrap it up. No schita, all is well. Uh, and it does help a lot. But of course, we have to get into the sigas of what happens if the leaves start to fall off, as we discussed yesterday. Remember yesterday, we discussed a case where we said that most of the leaves of the Hadassim fell off, and it was still considered to be kosher. How does that work? So we said yesterday, that we were talking about a Hadass Mitzra'ah. We were talking about a Hadass from Egypt that had seven leaves. Most of the leaves fell off. That was four gone, three left. The remaining three still covered the branch. It was still kosher. That's not the case here. Let's learn some of the halachos of, of Aravos on the bottom of Lamed Gimel, Lamed Beis. The Mishnah writes, Arava Gzula If you have an Arava that's stolen or an Arava that has dried out, done deal. So sometimes you look in the base Medrash on the third, fourth day of Sukkot, and someone's walking around with an Arava that looks like it's from last year. So push it that that's not going to be kosher. They're, all the leaves could be there, but it's Yavesh. That's not going to be. So how do you define Yavesh? Is Yavesh a lack of color? Is Yavesh, uh, is it brittle? Is it a question of falling off? So we have to, we have to see postkin for that. But the, the Mishnah doesn't detail that. Shel Asherah v'shel ir hanidachas psula. If the Arava is from an Asherah tree, or from an Irani Dachas, it would be Psula. Niktam Rosho, Nifritza Leha. If you had a, uh, if it was cut at the top, or if the leaves were Nifritza, we, have to, we don't know what that means. The Hatzafzifa. Tzafzifa was a different version of the Aravos. The Arava that we have is what we're familiar with. The Tzafzifa, as we'll see in the Gemara, has a little bit of a different shape to the leaves, and the leaves there were more, uh, had more of a funny shape to them. So there, about Tzafzifa, all of those are Psula. So, so far, we haven't seen anything Mutter yet. And says the Gemara, Kemusha v'shenashu miktsas aleha. If it was Kemusha, a little wrinkled, and shenashu miktsas, some of the leaves have fallen off. Just miktsas, not most. V'shel ba'al. And even if it, it was growing not by arve nachal, which is what the Pasuk writes, but it's by the ba'al, and Rashi basically points out that it's by a, by a regular person's house. It's not by arve nachal. Somebody owns it. It's in their backyard. All of those are kshera. We should be bothered by the Pusik. Arve Nachal should be by the Nachal. What are you saying that it's Shalba? The guy lives four miles inland. We live, we have water down by Lake Michigan. But what if I grow in my house? We're what are we? We're 3,000 north. We're 30 blocks away from the water. So well, we're so, well we're so then what, what would be the halacha in such a case? So then let, let's see what the Gemara says. We're now going to see a collection of brisas that will teach us a lot of uh, different approaches, I guess, to, to, the, to the Aravos, and we'll have to see how we conclude in just a couple of minutes. We're less than 30. We're less than 30. We're less than 30. That's what I said. Yeah. We're 30 north, but the actual point zero is somewhere in the middle of Lake Michigan. Yeah. yeah. Tatnu Rabbanan, a few lines from the bottom, the opening of the Gemara, Lamed Gimel, Lamed Beis. The Gemara writes, Arve Nachal, when the Pasuk says Arve Nachal, what is it referring to? Hagdelen ala Nachal, that is that which grows by the water. Davar Acher, no, Arve Nachal means She'ala, She'ala She'la Mashuch Kenachal, that its leaf has the shape of a Nachal. It's elongated like a river would be elongated. Our Aravos look like that, I guess. It looks more like a canoe if we had to pick a a three, uh, an aerial view shape. It's just kind of elongated. <coughs> but here it says it's kenachal, tanya idach, another brysa, arve nachal, ein liela arve nachal. I would only assume from the Pasuk and Chumash, like we started in the Mishnah, that only if something grows by the nachal would it be halachically acceptable. Shel ba'al v'shel harim minayin. What if it's by someone's house? What if it's in the middle of the mountains, not near the nachal? How then would I know that it's still kosher? Talmud Lomar, arve nachal, plural, last Rashi on the page. Dibur hamaschal arve mikol makom. Rashi says, lashon rabim, arve nachal. Not just one type of, otherwise it could have said erev nachal. So it didn't say that, it said arve nachal to indicate that even though something doesn't grow, Mamish by the Nachal, it still can be kosher. That's just a kasha. I don't understand how that works. The Pasuk says Nachal. What's the point of saying Nachal? So it could be, I don't know, it's just not so similar because Rash, that's that's how you tie it into the previous Shita and the Brisa. It's in the shape of a Nachal. Not, the Nachal wasn't specific about location. It was referencing the shape. And when there's a stream of water, it has an elongated look to it. So that's how the Gemara gets out of this question of our Mishnah, which said that by a Baal, by someone's house, that the Arabas are, are still kosher, because they don't look at the word Nachal to teach us about location, but rather to teach us about the shape. And the word Arve in the plural teaches us, yes, it's true by the Nachal, but it's also true by the Baal and by the Harim. Top of Lamedal, Lamedal, Omer, no, Arve, 
Shtayim. The plural language of Arve is not to, not to teach me that by Baal and Harim, that it's kosher. The language of Baal, the language of Arve, excuse me, on the top of Lamadal and Amadal, is to teach me the plural of Arabos in two ways. Shtayim. Achas lulav ve achas lamikdash. To teach us that we first have a mitzvah to have Arabos in a lulav, and we also have a mitzvah to have um, Arabos by the mikdash. Take a look at Rashi. Rashi di Brahmaschel Abashal Omer. Arve de Omar Kra, when the Torah says Arve in the, pl- in the plural, Lola Hachshir shall Baal Ba, it's not coming to teach me that I'm allowed to use our Ravos that come uh, by location that, that are by someone's house. Ella, rather, what is the plural of Arve coming to teach us according to Abashal? Lola Medcha Shetzarach Shte Mitzvos Shal Arava. That really there are two mitzvos when it comes to Arava, not just one. Achas Le Ogda Belulav. Number one is that it should be included in the binding of the Lulav. Be Achas Le Mikdash, the Haki Pesemis Beach. And one is the minag that we have, which is to do hakafos. We walk around the, the uh, we do them with the hoshanas. We walk around with our lulav and esrog around the base, uh, around the base of medrash, around the around the sefer Torah, and that is a commemoration of what we did in the base of mikdash. Okay, so that's what that's what Abba Shaul says. So says the Gemara. If that's what Abba Shaul says, well, first of all, verabanan according to the previous shita lemikdash minalahu. How do we then know? about the idea that the mitzvah that we had in the Beis HaMikdash to take our Ravos around the Mizbeach. Where would we have learned that from? Says the Gemara, the Mikdash Minalu, so answers the Gemara on behalf of the Rabbanon, it must be Hilchas Agniri, the who that we have a tradition that it's Halacha Lemosh Sinai. And what is Halacha Lemosh Sinai? Damar of Asi, Amar of Yochanan, Eser Netios, when there are 10 planted trees, I'll explain that in a moment, and Arava, which is our case, Venisu Chamayim, which is famous for being on Sukkot, these three things are Halacha Lemosh Misina. Esther Natios is a Halacha that applies within the 30 days prior to Shemitah. That if there are 10 trees uh, that are in a particular locale, one is allowed to clean the grounds around them just to enable the tree to grow well during Shemitah. Normally, we have a guideline to avoid working the ground for 30 days before um, before Shemitah begins, but that doesn't apply by Esther Natias because of Halacha Lamosh Misina. Fine. So these three things are Halacha Lamosh Misina. So therefore, according to the initial Shemitah that we saw in the bottom of Lamed Gimel Lamed Beis, it indicated that the word Arve was plural to teach us that yes, it can be by the Nachal, but Arve in the plural Mikol Mako means that it could even be by a person's house or in the mountains. He doesn't learn the, the word Arve in the same way that Abishol does. Where does he learn the Halacha of Abishol that the Arevos are used for two things, both for Lulav and for, Beis, for the Beis HaMikdash? So he says that's Halacha Lamosh Misina. Tanur Rabbanon, five lines down, Lamed Dalad Malal, Tanur Rabbanon, Arve Nachal, Hagdelo Salah Nachal, that we saw already. And what does it come to exclude? What is Arve Nachal, according to this drasha, coming to exclude? Prat, Litzav Tzifa, Hagdela Ben Haharim. This is to exclude, as our Mishnah had excluded, Tzav Tzifa, this second version of Aravos, which grows by the mountains. Now, its problem is not the mountains. Its problem is that it's Tzav Tzifa. What is the problem with that? Amar Abzer, Amai Kra, how do we know that this is true? So this is a Nevua, that a Kaddish Baruch Hu was telling Yechezkel to tell the Jews, Kach al Mayim, Kach al Mayim Rabim, Tzav Sefa, uh, Tzav Sefa, Samo. I think it's how you read it. No, it's Samo. So it's Tzav Sefa, Samo. So that's what the Gemara says. The Pasuk in Chumash says that we're going to be putting the Jews by large water, but Tzav Sefa, Samo, they're, they're only going to plant Tzav Sefa. Amar why, why is that a problem? How does that indicate an inferior nature of Tzav Sefa? that the Pasuk says anything negative about Tzavtzafa. Maybe all that's happening is that Tzavtzafa is just coming to explain. What should you be planting by the Mayim Rabim? It says the Gemarim came my Samo. If that's the case, why does it say Samo that it was placed there? So the Gemara is making a very subtle inference from the Pasuk. What is the inference? The inference is like this. The Baruch Hu says there's a lot of water over here. And instead of the Jews planting Aravos, they planted something that's harder to grow that needed the Mayim Rabin, which was Safsafa. It's an inferior type of plant. And therefore, we don't use it for a Lulav and Esrog or for the Lulav. So Amar, uh, Amar Rabbi Abo, basically, here's what's happening in the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Marti, she Yehu Yisrael lefanai kekochal Mayim Rabin. I want the Jews to be like those who are saturated with waters. Who Nihu, what type of growth should be there? There's something like an Arava, the Hain, and what did the Jews do? Samo Atzman They planted themselves like an inferior tree of the Tzafzafa in the mountain. So it's not as good. So that's version one of the story from which we learn that Tzafzafa is, is an unacceptable type of Arava. And Ika Damasne La, Lahai Kra, Amasnisa. But some say that the Pasuk that was quoted by Rav Zera, six, seven lines down, was really written on the Mishnah. So we're going to go back up to the top and reread what we learned according to this new version 
that really the pasuk is part of the um, pasuk is part of the brisa. So five lines down, the brisa said, "Tanu Rabbanon Arve Nachal Gedelos Al Al Hanachal Prat Litzatzva Gedela Bein Harim." And here's the change: Shene Emar Kach Al Mayim Rabim. We take out Reb Zera. In other words, Reb Zera the Amora was trying to give pshat in this brisa. But that's not what the Brisa said. That's when now let's go back to where we are, a quarter of the way down. When the Gemara says, Ika de masni lola hai masnisa, there are those who say that the Pasuk in Chumash, that Rebze, the Pasuk in Yecheskel that Rebzeiro was quoting, so that Pasuk is, um, is really part of the Brisa, and it is not uh, a quote of Rebzeiro. And if that's the case, then what was Reb Zera actually saying? So that's what the Gemara says here. That word is added in here. Fine. And then on that, uh, maybe the, all that's happening is that the tzafzafa is not like it was intentionally planted there, but rather it was to say that um, that uh, uh, it's just commenting on what was kachal ma'im rabim, my nihu tzafzafa. So says the Gemara, the same question as before, him came my summo. That does doesn't make sense. Amar Rabbi Abo, Amar Kadosh Baruch Hu, Ani Amarti Sheihu Yisrael Lefanai Kekachal Mayim Rabbi. The Jews should be like one to our fertile ground with lots of water. My new Arava, like something that grows there naturally and grows strong, which is the Arava. Behain, but they, the Jews, Samo Atzman Ketzav Sefa Shebeharim. This was a sharp uh, Musar that a Kadosh Baruch Hu was giving as a Nevuah to Yechezkel that he would then have to give to the Jews, which is that you're not living up to your potential. You're being a Tzav Sefa. You're not being an Arava, and that was the push of that particular. Um, of that particular nevuah. That brings us to halfway down. How can we distinguish between the arava, which is mutter to use as part of our aguda, as part of our lulav and esrog, and ve'ezah tzavtzafa, which is invalid according to our Mishnah. So says the Gemara, arava, when it comes to an arava, how can we identify it? So kona shela edom, the uh, branch itself has a redness to it. It is an extended, longer type of leaf, and its edges are smooth. But tzavtzafa, it's very different. The tzavtzafa doesn't have a red stalk. It has a whiter looking stalk. It's actually a shade of green, but it's a lighter color of green. And the shape of the leaf there is actually rounder. And it has a it has these uh, cuts on the edges of them that look like a sickle. I that can't be. Hatanya domele magal kosher domele masar pasal. Masar is a different type of serrated looking edge. But you were saying that tzafzafa is not kosher. Why is the tzafzafa not kosher if it has the the edges that look like a magal that look like a that look like a sickle? The brisa says vatanya domele magal kosher. So the gemara answers. There, are, there is a third type of arava that is kosher with that type of leaf. Says the Gemara, Amar Abayi Kitan Yahi V'chilfa Gila. What's Chilfa Gila? So Rashi says about five, six lines from the bottom of the page, the Brahmascha Chilfa, chilfa Aravasa. Lav Hainu, sorry, that's incorrect. The Brahmascha Chilfa Gila. Min Arava Ksherahi. It is a type of arava that is kosher, so it's not Tzafzafa. So now we have three types of aravas. We have arava that we know is kosher. We have tzafzafa that we know is not. And this is a new one called chilfagila that has a sickle looking uh, type of edge. And that is considered kosher. But all regular aravos, all other um, uh, all other versions of Arabos, those are kosher. So that's what Abaye says that we're talking about, that this is talking about Chilfagila, that when the Brisa says that a Magal is kosher, that's the case. Amar Abaye, Abaye makes a rather simple jump and says, Shma mina, hai Chilfagila kosher lo shana. He says, oh, we must, we see from here that this must therefore be the case that Chilfagila is kosher to be used for Alula. Says the Gemara, I mean, like that was pretty obvious. That's how you just gave shot in the sugya. So why are you saying the unnecessary line? I could have made that jump without Abaye. It says the Gemara Pshita, that was obvious. It says the Gemara, no. Mahu detema, and this I think we're seeing for the third time in Shas. Mahu detema ho the isle shem levoy lonis kasher. Here, since it has a second name to it, maybe we should assume that lonis kasher, kamash that even though it has a second name, it is still kosher. Maybe we should assume that it is a problem, that the shem levoy is problematic, and we would therefore assume that maybe the chilfa gila is not kosher. So it says the Gemara, Arve Nachal Amar Rachmana Mikol Mako. No, we're allowed to be more inclusive because of the uh, the plural language of Arve Nachal. 
uh, unrelated uh, in its essence, but only related in an ancillary form. Amar of Chizda, three fourths of the way down, twelve lines up. Lamedal and Medalev. The Gemara says in the name of Rav Chizda, Hanitzlas Mile. There were three types of phraseologies that were used back in the day. Ishtani Shmaihu, and their words were flipped. Their names changed. The words did not mean the same thing. Same thing anymore. Michichara Beis So before the Beis Hamikdash, you'd say let's say Arava, and people would understand what you were talking about. After the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed, then you would say Arava, and they were they were thinking about something else. So it's like three items you go to the store and buy, or you'll, we'll see that that's not the case with all of them. But the, their names change. So what are the three things whose names have changed? So one is Chalafta Arvisa, and Arvisa Chalafta. So Chalafta, we just learned about, that's Chilfagila. So Chilfagila and, and Arvisa, and Arvisa and Chilfasa, these names are changed. It depends what you what you want to be using in your Lulav. Not every version of Chilfasa was Mutter, and, but every version of Arava was. So before the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed, if you asked for an Arava, you'd get an Arava. After the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed, if you asked for an Arava, you got Chilfa. So that was one thing that changed. Next, Shipura and Chatzotzarta. Shipura is a shofar. Chatzotzarta is a horn. Prior to the Beis HaMikdash, you ask for a shofar, you get a shofar. Afterwards, Chatzotzarta, Shipura, the Mainaf Kamina, the shofar, so Rosh Hashanah. You can't use a regular horn. It has to be a halachic, uh, it has to be a halachic one. This is all Sif Min Shulchan Aruch about making sure that your shofar is kosher for Rosh Hashanah, make sure that it's coming from the right animal, that it's not cracked, and all the other various uh, halachos that apply therein. So that would also be enough kamina. If after the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed, you asked for a shofar, you would end up with something that wasn't kosher for it to be used on Rosh Hashanah, big enough kamina. Next different, pesorta and pesora. These are two types of beds. Uh, and Pesora and Pesorta. So before, if you asked for Pesorta, you'd get Pesorta. And after the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed, if you'd asked for Pesorta, you'd get Pesora, a different type of mattress, a Mainaf Kamina. Well, they were different in price. One was larger, one was smaller. So the Mekah Memkar, it could be a difference in regards to what you're purchasing. Not just in regards to the money transacting, yeah. but maybe in regards to Mekah Tos. What's that? Yeah. Could be quite aggravating. Yes, I'd like to get uh, mattress number one, please. But they changed mattress number one. So that can be very frustrating. Or you can make a, a major halachic thing is hare at mekudeshes li bipisorta zu, but it's not the same cost. This was the shy that Rabbi Robinson was talking about on Shabbos for a couple of weeks that the husband and wife got married with the ring from the jeweler that actually belonged to another couple. So couple number one accidentally came home with the ring of couple number two, hare at mekudeshes li, and they got married. That's a shy in halachic. He said, Lamai said they were still married because he was purchasing something that was a shava pruta, and he gave that shava pruta to his uh, to his wife. So, okay, Mazel they're married. They probably should switch the rings, but they don't have to do another kiddusha. So here, the nafkamin of the mattresses would be mekachu memkar. Sorts and pesor were different costs. Omar Abaye, I have another one. Af ani omer bekase and hovlila. As we have probably learned before, the cow has four compartments to its stomach, and in the case of the bekase, if there's a needle that pierces both sides of the bekase of this particular part of its stomach, it would be considered a trefa. By the hovlila, it was not considered a trefa. But if you change the name from bekase to hovlila and hovlila bekase, the nafkamina says the Gemara, three lines from the bottom, lamacha tenimsa ove besakosos. The nafkamina would be about whether or not it's going to be a trefa if there's a needle that pierces through the ove besakosos. If it's the ove besakosos, mom is yet, it's a trefa. But if it's not the ove besakosos and it's the hovlila, then it's not problematic. Omar Rava Bar Yosef, Afani Omer Bavel Borsif and Borsif Bavel. This applies even to the location of Bavel versus Borsif. Before the Chorban Beis Hamikdash, Bavel was Bavel, and Borsif was Borsif. After the Beis Hamikdash was destroyed, Bavel was Borsif and Borsif was Bavel. The Mai Nafkamina. What was the difference for this? Legite Nashem. What is this talking about? Very excited to learn Masechus Gittin at some point because what is this? What is discussed over there? Uh, if we look halfway through this first Rashi on the inner margin, the Ramaskala Gite Nashim, uh, Rashi says on the first of the long lines, Vamrinan Hasam, Bavel Ke'eretz Yisrael Legitin. Wow, that there's so many Talmidi Chachamim in Bavel that they were treated halachically like, uh, like Eretz Yisrael was, as it related to saying, Befanai Nechtavu, Befanai Nechtam. Okay, uh, we'll get there later. But that was the Nafkamina, is that Bavel was treated like Eretz Yisrael and Borsif was not. So post Chorban Beis HaMikdash, if you said that this couple is getting, di getting divorced in Bavel, so therefore we don't need to say this special phrase, B'fanei Nechtavu, B'fanei Nechtam, you're wrong. The, the, Bavel's Eretz Yisrael, but that Bavel was Borsif after the Beis HaMikdash, that was another Nafkamina. Top of Lamedal, the Medbez, a new Mishnah, and we're going to go to the next Mishnah, and then we'll stop. This new Mishnah discusses very, very Lamaisa, how many of each item do we need of the Dalad meaning? And we'll see here a three-way machlokes rishon. Uh, machlokes, excuse me, machlokes tanai. Rabbi Shmuel Omer, 
Shlosha Hadasim, check, we're familiar with that. Veshtei Aravos, also check, we're familiar with that. Lulav Echad, good to go. Be'esrog Echad, ah, we paskin like Rabbi Shmuel. We're all familiar with that. You can see the notation of the Rambam, the little Aleph right next to the Resh of Rabbi Shmuel, and that is quoted in the Rambam, it is quoted in Shulchan Aruch that we paskin this way. This is in the Shulchan Aruch and Orachaim, Tav Reish Nun Aleph, Sif Aleph, where it discusses this shita. Now, within Rabbi Shmuel, there's a nuance. Afilu, as it relates to the Hadassim, Afilu Shnaim Ketum and Ve'echad Eino Katum, even if two of the three are cut at the top, and one of the three Hadassim is still uncut, still good to go. Okay, that's shita number one. With the same numbers as we have, and with even two out of the three Hadassim being cut at the top. Four lines down, Rabbi Tarfon Omer, Afilu Shloshtan Ketumin. Rabbi Tarfon was in the same camp overall as Rabbi Shmuel in regards to the number of items. However, he felt that you don't need to have two and one. All three of them could be ketumen. All three of the hadasim could be cut and it would still be kosher. Rabbi Akiva Omer, Keshem Shilulav Echad Ve'esrog Echad. Just like we have one lulav and we have one esrog. Kach hadas echad ve'arova achas. Not this way. Could you imagine? It would be very different. It'd be a whole different world. You're walking around with You've probably seen people who just don't know like the halacha, so they only have one piece of hadas and one arava. Rabbi Akiva paskin that way, Ladina. He paskin that you're allowed to have one lulav. On the right side of the shedra, you have one hadas. On the left side, you have one arava. Just one of each, a little bit of a cheaper experience. Maybe it wouldn't have been cheaper. I don't know how the market would have played. But we'll talk about the market in a little bit because the Gemara was very sharp about that as well. So these are the two primary camps, Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Tarfon in camp number one, which is the way that we have our Dalad Minim, and Rabbi Akiva in camp number two. Tanya, we have a brysa that gives more color to these various shitas. Rabbi Shmuel Omer, pre Hadar. It says, pre Hadar. This is talking about the, uh, the Esrog, and it's in the singular, pre Hadar. Echad, only one. Kapos tamarim. It is red kapos, but it, it looks like kapas. So that is the lulav. That's a reference to that. That's only echad. Anaf eitz avos. Each th- of these three words indicate tree. You have anaf is a branch, and eitz is a tree, and avos, as we learned a couple of blot ago, on yesterday's blot, that it's covering over, the leaves are covering over. So that's shlosha. It implies uh, not such a pasha drasha, but the Gemara says that it is three. Uh, hadasim that are required, and Arve Nachal Stein, because of the plural language, it must therefore be that there are two. So this is just giving a little bit more explanation to the Shita Rabbi Shmuel that was much more distilled in our Mishnah. Like we saw in our Mishnah, that according to Rabbi Shmuel, he was of the opinion that of the three Hadassim, as long as, t- that if two of them were cut, even if only one was still whole, it would still be kosher. Rabbi Tarfon Omer He says, yes, we need three, but even if all three of them are ketumen, again, those two are in the same camp of the, the number of Arba Minim that we are used to. And Rabbi Akiva Omer, Keshem Shilulav Echad, so that was exactly like we saw in the Mishnah. Again, the same two camps, just another brisa that adds a little bit of explanation is Rabbi Shmuel Shita. Uh, the word lo is removed here. So Omar, Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Eliezer said, Maybe we should assume, not like what we do. What we do is we hold the, the, the lulav, hadasim, and arabos in one hand, and we hold the esrog in the other. But maybe, says Rabbi Eliezer, and by, just from a Balabatish perspective, it sounds great. Why don't we tie the esrog in also? So if it's crazy enough that we're walking around with leaves, just tie the lemon in, right? What's the difference? At some point, it just... What, to the to the outside looker, it doesn't seem to make much of a difference. And from Sukkim and Chumash, it doesn't seem to be much of a difference either. Grab them all together. If three of them need to be together, together why not the fourth? So says the Gemara Amris. To that we would say, Does the Pasuk say that you take the Priyat Hadar, the Esrog, and the Kapos Tamar? No. The Halolo Nemar Ella Kapas, Kapos, right? It doesn't, that's what the Pasuk says. It says, So the pre hadar is the lemon. That's talking about the lulav. And that's talking about the esrog. And then when you move on to kapos marm, there's no vav. There's no vav achibor. So therefore, when we hold the dalad minim, the esrog stays on, on its own. And the lulav, hadas, and arabos stay on its own. And in fact, the rest of the pasuk is mashma this way as well. Because it says, Kapos marm, ve anaf es avos, ve arve very much from the Pesukim, just from the letter Vavs. So the way that Rabbi Eliezer skins the Pesuk is that because the letter Vav doesn't exist between Esrog and the other and the other of the, sh- the Shalosh Minim, the remaining Shalosh Minim, so therefore the Esrog is held separately while the remaining three are tied together. Uminayin Shema Akvin Zezen. Okay, well, if they're not inextricably bound, maybe we should say that you have one mitzvah. There's one mitzvah of the three Minim, and then there's a separate mitzvah of an Esrog. 
If, if they don't have to be tied together, says Rabbi Eliezer, so how do we know that they're not two separate mitzvahs? We have that by tcheles. What we were at Tzitzis now, Dindo Raisa, because tcheles is uh, supposed to be, but it's a separate mitzvah that happens to apply while you're wearing tzitzis. Very good. So why don't we say the same thing over here? So says the Gemara, uh, says the Gemara, we can't assume that an esrog is going to be a separate mitzvah of the remainder, the remaining uh, different meaning. Why is that? One third, almost halfway down, says the Gemara, Lama Dalad Amid Beis, Talmud Lomar Ula Kachtem, Shetehei Lekicha Tama. This whole pasuk, this whole pasuk has to be one Lekicha. Both the esrog, Priyet Sadar, and Kapos Tmarim, Va'anafei Savos, Va'arvei Nacha. So even though you're right that there's no vav hachibor connecting the esrog to the remaining three minim, but the fact that they're in one pasuk, we darshan from the pasuk, Talmud Lomar, ul kachtem shetei lekicha tamu. It says the Gemara. So therefore what? So therefore, there's, you, can't, you can't do the mitzvah of esrog separate of the other three. We separated the esrog from the aguda. Why? Because there's no vav between the esrog and the remainder of the pasuk. It says the Gemara, fine, maybe they're two separate mitzvahs. You can't say that. Because so that's the drush of the Gemara. These two words that ulakachtem is kind of like a notary cone, like a play on words. Ulakachtem is meant to be lakichatama. The whole pasuk has to be one lakicha. It has to be the esrog and the remainder of the dalad minim all together. Then the Gemara asks, asks a question that we should we should have thought of our, on our own. What is this strange thing in our Mishnah with Rabbi Shmuel that of the three hadasim, two of them can be caught? And one of them doesn't have to be cut. Says Gemara, Rabbi Shmuel, what are you talking about? Man of Shach. No matter what, I have a hard pro- I have a hard time with your shita. Ish boy. If you're saying that there's a din by hadas and that they have to be shleiman and none of them can be niktam, like boy nami kulhu. Why does only one have to be full? All three of them should be full. And ilo boy shleiman. And if you don't need the hadasim to be full, afidu chad nami lo. What are you talking about? What does this even mean? Two of them have to be are allowed to be cut, and one of them is not allowed to be cut? Where does he get that from? Says the Gemara, Amar Bira'a, Amar of Ami, Bira is the name of a person, Chazar Bo Rabbi Shmuel. He's Maskin, and Rashi highlights Lakula. Rashi, 12, 15 lines from the bottom, Dibra Maskin, Chazar Bo Rabbi Shmuel, Mitchilas Tavarav, Umachshir Bechad, Umihu Hadar Bay. He allows even one. What does that mean? Typical Rashi. So that's what the Gemara says, Chazar Bo Rabbi Shmuel. Amar of Yehuda, Amar Shmuel, Shmuel says, Halacha kirebi tarfo. What was Rebbe Tarfo in Shita? He says that all three of them can be ketumen. All three of them can be cut. The Az de Shmuel the Taime, Shmuel is following his own opinion where he says that he holds like Rebbe Tarfo. How so? To Amar lehu Shmuel lehanhu de mezavne asa. He said to the people who sell asa, who sell the hadasim, Ashvu, set a fair market price, Uzvinu, and then sell. The Elo, if you don't set a fair market price, if you're going to do any price gouging, I'm going to pask in out loud like Rabbi Tarfon that you only need one kosher one. So, okay, fine. My time. Huh? What is the reason why Rabbi, what was the reason why Shmuel said this? If you want to say that it's because you're being makil, then just say that even the most lenient sheet is like the sheet of Rabbi Kiva in our Mishnah. But so it can't be. So therefore, the reason why he said this is because finding three that are completely cut, that's shechichet. To find one that isn't cut, and therefore he was making a stringency on the people in the market to make sure that their prices were right, were correct. Otherwise, he'd make it hard for them by paskening like Rebbe Tarfon. We'll stop right here. Tomorrow, I w- we will not have shear in person. Uh, we're not have shear at all, actually. I'll pre-record and post. Um, and uh, we'll pick up at this Mishnah and learn one blot. Thursday night, we'll learn a blot and a half. Location to be determined. I will keep you all posted, and we'll stop right here. Wishing you all a beautiful night. Mm-hmm. Sure, it's kind of harsh here.